بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم اما بعد ريسبكتد برادرز سيسترز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مولانا سليمان صاحب ريكويستد مي تو شير ا فيو ووردز ادروايز امونغس ذا جادرينغ اوف ذا علماء اي دونت فيل ان ذا بوزيشن تو سبيك وين ذيز جاينتس امونغس اس هاويفر ذا فيو ثينجز ذات دو كوم تو مايند ان شاء الله لايك تو شير ذيز بوينتس انفورشنلي living in a day and age where materialism is hitting us hard in the face where unfortunately many of us especially our youngsters our youth they are faced with so many things where we are distracted and we are attracted distracted from the deen and we are attracted towards the dunya and based upon this unfortunately we are going through a phase especially as muslims living in the west we are bombarded with certain instruments which are trying to push us away from the deen and religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mufti Saab was just giving some advice to the students of Bukhari Sharif and Mufti Saab mentioned a beautiful point which I like to share and that is Mufti Saab was saying, explaining that to the, the girls who will inshallah begin the studying of Bukhari Sharif he said that you have the Baytullah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you visit any house of Allah, whether it's in Makkah, whether you visit the house of Allah known as Masjid Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, any masjid you visit, there are adab and etiquettes. You have one type of house which belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have another type of house which is known as Baytul Rasul, the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not restricted in Medina Munawwara or that Hujra where the Messenger of Allah is uh, laying to rest in that blessed location. Rather, the, the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is every center, every institute, every organization that is teaching the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we're here at this moment in time, we are in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's certain etiquettes and there's certain requirements for us before we enter the house, whilst we're sitting inside the blessed house, and when we leave the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before we enter the house, when we visit the house of anybody, you know, recently the beloved queen, Ammi Jan, she died, and people were mourning, Muslims, non-Muslims, and we saw certain actions of individuals who were trying to pay their respects to Ammi Jan. And some people were waiting in queues for hours on end. There was an individual for 13 hours, he stayed inside the queue. When he was asked, why are you doing this? He said, this is the least respect I can show to Queen Elizabeth. When it comes to people of the dunya, if people are behaving like this, my brothers, we are more worthy, our sisters, we are more worthy of showing respect, dignity, to the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We are going through a phase where, subhanallah, whether it's students of knowledge, whether it's the parents, whether it's the locals in the community, they say certain things, not knowing that the things that words that are coming out of their mouth, they are actually talking about not a scholar, not about books of hadith, rather they are dishonoring the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and what is the house of Rasulullah? It is the ta'aleem, it is the tarbiyah, it is the education that takes place in madaris, in darul ulum. And if we don't show respect to the blessed house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we will see the situation that we are in today. We're not interested in learning or giving some sort of sacrifice for the teachings of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, when you look into the, into the, the, the scholars of the past, you look at an example we can give. The student of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi Imam Muhammad bin Hassan al Shaybani spent two years in the company of Imam Abu Hanifa, not so long compared to Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, Imam Abu Yusuf. But look at how much respect he had for Baytul Rasul, the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember, the key point is house of Rasul doesn't mean the blessed Hujra inside Medina Munawwara, it is every institute organization, whether it's in Birmingham, Leicester, London, whether it's in the UK or outside of the UK. We have to show utmost respect to the household of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And what did Imam Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani do? He came to the class of Imam Abu Hanifa. And he said, Ustaji, I want to enroll. And he, Imam Abu Hanifa said, my condition is you have to be a Hafiz of the Quran for you to enroll in the class. So he said, if you want to be in my classroom, you have to be a Hafiz of the Quran. Some of us, before entering the house of Rasulullah, this madrasa, Darul Ulum, we say so many things with our mouths, not knowing that we are dishonoring, disrespecting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he came, he said, okay. He came on a Monday, for example, one week later, he comes back to Imam Hanifa. And Imam Hanifa says, please let me enter your classroom. Imam Hanifa said, I told you the condition, you have to be a Hafiz of the Quran. Because when I'm explaining Masail, if you don't understand, know the Quran by heart, it's going to be difficult for you to study and understand what I'm talking about. So he said, oh Imam Hanifa, you, I came to you last week, I've come back one week later, Alhamdulillah, I've memorized the entire Quran. Allah. In one week, one week, this is what you call sacrifice. Sacrifice, imagine. Now the thing is, my brothers, this is just one story I can explain many other instances and uh, the, you know, scenarios in the life of our pious predecessors. But the thing is, my brothers, when we have Baytul Rasul, a Darul Ulum, an institute, why is it that the parents, if it's not the parents, it's the children, if it's not the children, it's the local community, they're always taking a dig and a hit at the Baytul Rasul, the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Whereas as a community, Look how the non-Muslims respected Ammi Jan. And on this side, when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do we do? We totally disregard the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First point, my brothers, I want to talk about three points and then finish inshallah. Number one point is, before we enter the house of somebody who's noble and respectable in our eyes, what do we do? We change our mindset and we make ourselves realize that the house I'm going to, I've got to make sure I am presentable in the house. Otherwise, they'll, they'll, they'll kick me out or I will show, I will be a means of taklif and hurt for the, the person who's, who, who owns the house. Our mentality should be anybody who serves the deen of Allah, whoever serves the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we have to ensure our mindset is such that we love, respect, and do whatever is in our capacity to assist these individuals. Number two point is, when we enter the house, what do we do? Once we've entered, we realize and make sure that the, 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 the mode of behavior, my tone, I will not raise my voice, I will dress appropriately at the same time when I enter the house, what do I do? I enter in such a manner that I make sure I do not cause any taklif or pain to the host who is hosting me. In the same way, when we come to the Darulum, a madrasa institute, what should we do, my brothers and sisters? We should change our atmosphere, our environment, as well as our mindset, in accordance to the demands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the third point is the most important: is that when we enter into the house, we are hosted by the host. Whatever the host says, because we respect and love and revere the individual who's hosting us. We should revere, respect, and uphold the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If we do these three basic things, my brothers and sisters, inshallah, we will see barakah and blessings in our communities. We're not seeing this at the moment. What we are seeing is people taking digs and hits at the institutes. Oh, fulah Mulvi Sahib is doing this. Fulah person is doing this. Fulah person is. But what are you doing? What are you doing? If you're not doing anything yourself, like they mentioned, the scholars as well, and it's mentioned already in a few books, where, you know, there was a, 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 an alim, he was teaching Bukhari, he was a Shaykh al-Hadith, and one of the locals, they approached him, and they said, Mulvi Sahib, the non-Muslims have reached the moon. And what have you done? All you're doing is teaching Bukhari, and they've gone to the moon. So the Shaykh al-Hadith, the scholar, he said, that okay, I'm teaching Bukhari Sharif, I've not managed to reach the moon. Chalo, at least I've started teaching Bukhari Sharif, but what are you doing in your life? What are you doing? That is why my brothers, utmost respect, that if we want to bring Islam, Sharia, Deen inside our lives, we have to respect the house of Rasulullah. We have to respect those who are walking around inside the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the same time, anything that comes out from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his house, blessed house, then we have to accept it wholeheartedly. Doesn't matter, the whole world can turn upside down. But at the end of the day, anything that comes from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to implement those teachings so that we can live in peace and harmony. And at the same time, we will be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the tawfiq and ability first of all to practice upon these points. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, each and every one of us, the ability to value the deen of Allah. My brothers, how long are we going to remain in the dunya? You know, whatever little we do in this dunya, any good that we do towards the deen of Allah, this is a means of salvation for us in the akhirah, inshallah. And if we live with this mentality, any opportunity we get to serve or be a means of assistance for the deen of Allah, inshallah, Allah will bless us in the dunya and Allah will bless us in the akhirah. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi halki Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.